I used to go on these long walks all the time when I was still in my teens. It became something that I spent a lot of time doing. I lived out of town, but not in a completely rural area. It wasn't exactly close by either, though. There weren't many sidewalks to walk on, but at least the roads were mostly all paved. There were a few dirt roads nearby, but not too many. This happened during the summertime. I tended to get both way bored and way too hot during the summer. Whenever I wanted to cool off, I would generally take the walks at night just to keep from getting all sweaty and gross. However, I did not have an air conditioner, and during the day it would often get very hot and muggy. About halfway through the summer, when I was taking a walk during the day, I began walking down a road I hadn't really ever gone down before. I wish that I could explain to you just how beautiful this area was, but I just could not do it well. I'll do my best, though. Along this road, there were these fields with trees and lots and lots of flowers. When I got really close to the road I'm talking about, I saw there was a log fence. At least, I guess that's what you would call it. Those fences that have wooden posts with three horizontal logs that go along them. The paved road turned onto the strangest dirt road I had ever seen. It was like some sort of white dirt, something I hadn't really seen anywhere else. Along the left side of the road was a hill. The right side was filled with trees, and eventually led on to another hill as well. Although I was walking between the hills, the road never went into the hills itself. The main point being that it was a very, very peaceful and beautiful scenery to walk through. There were a few houses on the road, but they were all a bit far apart. There was one house, though, that stood out from all the others. It was a very old-looking two-story house. It was completely fenced in, and some of the windows were even boarded up. I assumed that the house was abandoned. I have a thing for abandoned buildings. Those are my favorite type of scary stories. I never thought I myself would have the guts to actually go explore one, though. And there was something really spooky and just absorbing about this particular building. My walks in that area became more and more frequent. I had never seen anyone in the house or around it, so I decided that the house was undoubtedly abandoned. Finally, one day, I decided I'd built up enough guts to go explore the house myself. Other than a few old people just sitting on their porches, I had never seen anyone in that area, and absolutely no one inside the house, like I said. I have to tell you that it was pretty freaky just even walking up to the house. I kept looking around, getting scared that maybe suddenly a car or even a cop would come walking down the street. The front door was locked, so I had to go around and look for another way to get in. I walked over to the back of the house. The back door was locked, but it was sort of loose as well. After shaking it for a bit, I was able to unhinge it and get into the house. My heart was pounding in my chest as I walked in. It was just as spooky as I had imagined it would be. It was covered in cobwebs and smelled very musty. I wanted to go up to the second floor. As I was walking up the stairs, two things happened extremely quickly. The stairs collapsed suddenly, and I fell partially into it. One of my legs fell into the hole, while the other didn't and just bent awkwardly. I hit my head into the wall, and the force almost knocked me out. I cried out, and everything went blurry for a moment. It all happened so quickly, but when I looked up, I saw someone on the second floor of the house. It was extremely quick. He moved from one room to another. It was such an odd experience, but I had been hit so hard that I passed out. The very next thing I remember, I woke up outside the house. I knew for sure I had not left on my own. Someone must have carried me out. I thought about going back into the house. I really did. But as I was looking at it, I swear I noticed a shadow looking out from behind one of the curtains. I decided it was probably a bad idea to try and go back in. I walked all the way home. Well, really, I limped home. My parents were worried about me, but I assured them that I had just tripped while out on a walk. I didn't tell them anything about what I had seen in that house.
I like my middle of the night walks. I'm not much of a people person, so getting out when it's quiet and no one else is around really appeals to me. I'm not so sure I'm going to be keeping up with them much longer, though. You see, about a month ago, I had to go to the hospital for something in the middle of the night. It was no big deal, everything was okay, but after all was said and done, I had to walk home because I don't have a car. I only live a couple of miles away though, so it wasn't much of a walk between. Since it was still warm out, I figured I'd enjoy the opportunity. It was so peaceful and warm that the fact that I'm a female and was out walking alone at 3am just completely slipped my mind. I suppose it's one thing to walk the quiet roads next to my home, but it was definitely something different to walk along the quiet highway from the hospital. I walked for a very long time without even seeing a single car. I wasn't really surprised to hear one coming up from behind me eventually, but I was surprised when I heard the engine rev as the car started coming up very quickly. I looked over my shoulder, just in time to see that not only was the car coming quickly, it was veering off the road straight toward me. I quickly stepped backward, stumbling as the car drove right through the space I had just been walking. I heard whooping and cheering as they passed, and I landed on my butt in the grass. To my surprise, they slammed on their brakes and began reversing toward me. I stood up and dusted myself off, preparing for whatever stupid or crude thing they might say. The passenger leaned out of his window and asked in a seemingly sincere voice, Hey, are you alright? Alright, maybe they hadn't intended on running me over. Perhaps they just weren't paying attention and it had been an accident. Still, they were stupid for not paying attention in the first place, but I could accept this if it was just an accident. Yeah, I'm fine, I said, pulling grass out of my hair. Are you sure? Yes, thank you, I'm fine. With that, they spit off into the night. Now I wasn't sure at all what to think. I continued my walk, grumbling to myself, when I spotted the small gas station that marked the turnoff to my house. It was a small, locally owned place, and so it wasn't open 24 hours. It was already closed for the night, and the lot was completely dark. For some reason, though, my eyes were drawn toward it. I peered through the darkness a moment, when I realized that parked next to the darkened pumps was a car. The same car that had just nearly ran me over. I froze in place. What were they doing parked next to these closed pumps? Why were their lights out? Essentially like they were hiding there in the dark. I could hear the engine, I knew it was running, which made the fact that their lights were out all that much stranger. I tried to ignore it and just walk quickly past the gas station and toward the road that led me back to my neighborhood. I got past it and then took a right turn, walking along the dimly lit street. It wasn't long though before I heard a car behind me. It was weird because there was no headlights. I turned and looked, and even though it was dark, I could just about make out that same car. They were driving along with their headlights off, very slowly, keeping themselves about five car lengths behind me. There was no doubt at all at this point that these people were following me. Scared now, I tried not to show it. I tried walking a little faster, but not so much that it would give away the fact I was now scared. My heart was racing. I had quite a while to go before I got home. The car kept following me, its lights off all the while. When I turned to a different street, it did the same. I was walking past a graveyard, and I almost thought about running into it. It would have been stupid, though. I wouldn't be sure what to do afterward. But then I looked out. There's this house where this family gathers on their porch and drinks all night. It turned out that they just happened to all be out there. I had never talked to them before, but I was sincerely hoping that this time they would help me out. I turned into the yard and called out in a voice I hoped they could hear, but the car following me could not. I told them I was being followed, and I thought these people were trying to do something bad to me. They were eager to help. Maybe too eager, honestly. They invited me onto the porch, and one of the drunken men went inside and came out with a shotgun. 
The car had stopped still about five lengths away. I'm not sure if they noticed the drunkard man with the gun, but I'm sure they did when they turned the headlights on. The drunk man yelled out, This is my boomstick, and fired a shot off into the air. The car immediately turned around and sped off in a hurry. The drunk man who had just helped me yelled after them, That's what I fucking thought, you bitches. The man came back to the porch. They offered me to drink a beer with them, and I took it. Damn sure knew I needed it. I haven't seen the car again after, but every time I walk by that house now, I get a beer and stop to drink with them a bit. I guess some good came out of this whole event. This was a true story of me and my friend that happened around May of 2020 in Minnesota. I'm going to give you all the details I can remember. My friend and I had been going out into this forest that he had found just about a month or two ago. It was only about a 20 minute bike ride from our houses. He had a great time there and he had been going every week for a while. He had made this cool teepee and even sharpened a few sticks in case we had to fight anything. Honestly, it was pretty dumb, but we both thought it was super cool at the time. We were only 14 years old after all. I myself had always loved horror movies and had made my friend watch them with me all the time. He hated it. He was always paranoid that someone or something was going to get us while we were there. That's how he came up with the idea to form that teepee and some wooden spears so we wouldn't be attacked. We were finishing the school year online and had to study for finals, so we hadn't been out there in a few weeks since our last time. When school was done with, we decided to go back there just to check on it real quick and see if anything had changed. We also just wanted to relax a bit honestly so our parents agreed to let us sleep over in our teepee overnight, as long as we kept in touch with them throughout. We didn't tell our parents this, but ever since we'd been going to that forest, we brought along a big buck knife and a hatchet as well. We thought we were so cool and outdoorsy and manly. Anyways, when we were gathering our things to sleep for the night, we noticed suddenly that the buck knife was missing. We thought nothing of it at first, and assumed we had just left it at the forest last time. On the bike ride there, my friend was on edge because we had just watched a scary movie a week before, and he was just a wimp like that sometimes. We got there at around 8pm, when we noticed this terrible smell. We couldn't locate it or tell what it was though. This made my friend think that a dead body was nearby, and we needed to leave right away. I told him it was just being a wimp, and that nothing was wrong, it was just a weird smell. As we were making the 5 minute walk to our teepee area though, we saw a trail of red on the leaves, which made him even more on edge. Just to calm him down, I stupidly told him I had seen a spray paint can in the trash a mile back, and someone was probably just being dumb and trying to play a prank. As we kept walking though, the stench got more and more strong, but still I thought nothing of it. When we finally got to the clearing, we saw our teepee and felt a huge wave of relief come over us, even though the smell was now the strongest it had ever been. We peeked inside the teepee through the little door flap that we had made. What we saw was so haunting that we both almost fainted. We saw clothes and feces from a human. The clothes looked like men's, and they were huge. We continued to investigate, as we noticed that behind our teepee were two rotting deer carcasses, with a wooden spear in one, and a buck knife in the eye of the other. At this point, my friend was already running back to our bikes, but I stupidly stayed longer to investigate. That didn't last long though, because out of nowhere, I suddenly heard from behind me, Would you kids like to come and live with me forever? It was the voice of some 50 year old man. Without even looking back, I bolted with my friend over to our bikes. My friend was super slow and easy to catch up to. We biked as fast as we could back home and told our parents we had just gotten bored. None of us have spoken about the event since.
What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you guys liked the video, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. That sort of stuff really helps me out with the audience engagement and really helps my videos get out to a lot more people. So hopefully we can get to that 1 million one day. Uh, help me out guys, that'd be great. Once again, starting this week, on the second channel, we're going to be doing some true crime stuff, probably twice a week, if I feel in the mood for it, and feel like doing all the research required. Those will be on Wednesdays slash Thursdays and Saturdays slash Sundays, probably. So look forward to that if you're interested. There's a link to my second channel in the description. The name is Mr. Blue Sky, so keep an eye out for that. If you guys feel like contacting me for any reason, uh, links to all of my social media will be in the description below, including my Facebook, Twitter, and Gmail accounts. Send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please make sure that it has proper grammar, and uh, try to include as much detail as possible so it's long enough for me to include in a video. Also. Please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is, if it has one, what type of story it is, if it has a theme, and how you would like to be credited in the description of the video the story appears in. If you guys are curious about the art used in this video, links to my artist, Alan, will be in the description below. He does a lot of horror art stuff, and he's really good at it. He also does commissions, so if you guys have any projects you want to work on or something, please be sure to check him out. He can probably get you something really good, as usual. Links to the music used in the video will be in the description below in the order which it appears. I think that's pretty much all for now, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.